Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Humanity House tonight, and welcome to this Henriette von Linden lecture. Uh, especially a warm welcome, of course, to our guests this evening, Dr. Frauke Hurtbein, uh, Fatima, Dr. Fatima Al-Badr, Hindal Ansari, Raya Abu Galal, and of course, Noura bin Saidan. Um, I'll introduce the speakers um, more extensively in a little bit. It's wonderful to see such a fantastic turnout tonight. Um, it's a packed house, which is brilliant, of course. And um, my name is Anna-Marie van Geel, and I'll be moderating um, the evening tonight with you. So to give a little bit of background, um, Dutch policy on gender and on the position of women in the Gulf region um, is a very important spare point for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Um, each year, the ministry organizes um, uh, a leadership um, program for women from the Gulf, and all the embassies in the region um, are very much focused also and committed to supporting um, women's participation in all walks of society. In addition, uh, as many of you might already be aware of, um, tonight's lecture was named in memory of a special Dutch woman who used to be the director of the Middle East and North Africa Department of the Ministry. Um, her name was Henriette van Linden, hence the Henriette van Linden lecture. So altogether it is very fitting um, that this evening is indeed filled with women, an all-female panel actually, um, handing her the mic to inform us about the past, the present and the future of Gulf women. Um, I was wondering, actually, whether we have any guests in the audience who are from the Gulf? Would you maybe want to raise your hand? Or anyone who has lived there or worked there? Okay, that's quite a few more people. Anyone who has traveled there? That's quite a lot of us. That's brilliant. All right. Um, wonderful. Really very nice. So this evening, the five women who are with us uh, will speak to us about societal developments in the legal um, area, in the business area, um, in education, and also in the cultural field, and the role of women therein, of course. So it's a very, very packed evening, um, a very dense evening, and probably quite a fast-paced evening, so um, please brace yourselves. Um, Fatima al -Vanawi, uh, from Saudi Arabia was unfortunately unable to join us today uh, due to work issues. She has a new movie coming up, which is very good news for her, of course, um, and in a way very good news for us as well. Um, you can find one of the movies that she plays in, Baraka Meets Baraka, uh, a romantic comedy on Netflix. Um, but it does mean that because of her recording a new movie, we will have to miss her here tonight. But we do have the opportunity to listen, first of all, to Dr. Frauke Herdbey, who flew in from Abu Dhabi, uh, and who will shed light on historical developments and also the present day position of women in the broader region to give us a context. We have um, Dr. Fatima al Badr from Kuwait, who will focus on legal issues. From Qatar, Hind al Ansari, who is an expert on educational trends and developments and reforms. And Raya Abu Ghalal, um, a Dutch Iraqi lady joining us from the UAE, and she will talk to us from a business perspective. Now, after the talks um, from these four ladies, um, we'll have a shared conversation with questions from my side, and then after that, we'll open up the floor for questions from your side, so that you will have plenty of time to ask any and all of your burning questions. Um, and finally, before we go on to the drinks in the foyer, which is about two hours from now, um, we will invite Noura bin Saidan um, to talk as well. She's already <laughs> painting, as you can see. <laughs> um, Noura is a Saudi graffiti artist, and she's currently an artist in residence at the Amsterdam Street Art Museum, right? And she'll tell us a bit about her work, um, and she'll do um, a live painting session while we're talking. Um, she'll not be colouring in yet um, because of the smell of the paints. Um, so she'll be doing that when we're enjoying our drinks, but then you'll be free, of course, to, um, to come and watch her. Um, and um, yeah, so what she's going to do is um, draw on the spots, 
based on what she hears um, all of us talk about. So that will be a very interesting process to, um, to watch unfold, I think. Thank you, Nora. <laughs> so before I welcome Frauke to the stage, um, may I please ask you, you've probably done so already, but I'm going to ask you anyway, um, to switch your phones to silent mode. That would be very helpful. All right, so let's turn to Dr. Frauke Hörbe, our first speaker. Frauke studied history and political science um, in Germany, and she received her PhD from the Freie Universität in Berlin in 1967. And that same year, she and her husband moved to Abu Dhabi and never left. Soon after her arrival, Frauke joined um, what is now known as the UAE's National Archive, um, taking part in setting it up and in its development. She's published widely on the social and economic um, and constitutional history, um, and also of current developments in the Gulf. So her talk is very much, as you can gather from this introduction already, a bird's eye view um, of the position of women. Frauke, very welcome. And uh, may I please ask you all to, to welcome her with um, a warm round of applause. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm still waiting for the picture to come up. Ah, there we are, yes. Um, this first picture, this was taken in Dubai in the early 1970s. Why I put it here was to show, uh, to demonstrate um, a point that I find is, is important as a starting point of uh, discussing the role, the development of the role of women in the Gulf, and in my case, particularly in the U UAE. Um, this photograph shows confinement. And these three ladies uh, come from one of the houses that you see, and um, the point is that in the traditional uh, setting of the society in any of the Gulf countries, um, the position of women really was the way and to symbolize and also to put into action the most important pillar, I would say, of um, society, and that was the inviolability of the family honor. And that meant that the women in the family were actually kept inside the house. So there is um, a, a question of space, really. The space was very limited for, for women inside the house and a courtyard, and when they did move outside the house, it was again just within the uh, sort of neighboring uh, vicinity. And as you can see, the walls are very high, and when the ladies go out, they more or less take the walls with them in that their dress is all covering. And uh, so both physically, and as one can imagine also mentally, the space was very limited. And this confinement was nevertheless um, a given in the traditional family. And um, the particular point is, of course, when does this open? When does the mental um, uh, confinement open up? And now maybe we can have the next picture. And there, quite clear, it opens up with education. And that is a picture that was taken again in the early 70s. And um, um, you can imagine already the girls leave this confined space of the house because the school is a place where they have to work, walk to. So they, the space opens up. Um, on the way to school, they may meet other people, and also in school they meet uh, the teacher in this case, who is quite likely to have come from either Egypt or Palestine. Or So the world opens up physically, and of course, for th when you, these girls learn to read and to write, which was never the given in their original type of school that they might have been gone to a Quran school where they, the girls only learned to read and not to write. Now, they are, the world is opening. It's a door, I would say. It's, it's a window, a window. And then 
the next uh, step is when these girls grow up, in the case of the UAE, the univers first university was founded in 1975. So girls go to university and that opens up a completely new door to the world because um, in that case they, um, they can look forward to a life where they can help to construct it. The earlier life was really very preordained. Um, it was predetermined in many ways with um, a short young a short time for youth and a very early marriage, which meant that that was life. Whereas now with education, they have a hand in for, uh, forming and shaping what is going to happen to them as people. And if they work very hard, they have a chance to also possibly get married later. And uh, the next step is really to look forward to using what they have learned at the university then to um, take a profession, to take uh, em employment. And not many families actually allowed this. It was still very limited. But things have moved very fast. And now we are to the next picture, maybe. We, we move forward to a situation where um, uh, not only does the um, the authorities, the government, the sheikhs, call it what you like, the, the government, um, enormously encourage um, women to take up, to use their education, to take up um, uh, employment, and to become even encouraged to be ministers, to present the country and so on to, and, and the country, the authorities make use of their uh, very well-educated ladies. Also to, um, as a picture abroad, to um, let the country shine abroad. And the picture I have brought here along is Busena um, Al-Qasim is, let's say, the almost, I would say, the ultimate of, of the, um, an example of the ultimate of the um, possibilities that uh, women now have in the UAE. And that is not only look for an employment in either public service or, or in, in a private company, but to make their own company. And in this case, Busena actually has engaged in um, culture and she founded a company which brings films to the UAE, and she has her own film um, showing company. It's like a caravan, it's a nomadic film company, if you like. Uh, she uses um, spaces either in, in, in Dubai, in the Sarkal Avenue, or in Abu Dhabi, in a place which is um, um, uh, set up for, to receive cultural events, just like this one here. And uh, she brings the films to these particular venues. She is passionate about films, and that is, has become her vocation. And that is miles away from um, the situation that, uh, where there was such a conf For her, it is geographically, she can move to any place in the world, 155 countries, are accepting the UAE passport uh, without, uh, well, with, with facilities for visas. And so the geographical, physical, mental confinement of space has opened up. And um, the only restrictions I would think, I would want to say now is that the government, the, the position of, of um, what people could expect from from the authorities is the sky is the limit. And yet, many ladies still struggle with not fulfilling their 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 possibilities their, and and ultimately not uh, not gaining the, um, uh, the their possibilities, and that is because of a confinement or the the tradition in the family that still um, it, they have to struggle internally. They have to struggle with the family, and some of them do not see that as a struggle, and they're very happy to um, go along with what the families prefer. 
And I would say that the uh, symbol for this compromise that many ladies still voluntarily do is actually, um, and I'm generalizing here with my friends here, uh, actually the difference is, is already visible. I was going to say in their dress, because in the UAE, uh, even the most best dressed ladies really love to wear the uh, abaya, and they're beautiful and often very, very well adorned. But this is still a compromise and a, um, a concession that one does find, uh, but um, it is also no longer everywhere obvious. And um, uh, the point is really, if there is a battle for women still, then it is first of all a battle like we also have in Europe. And secondly, it is the advancement of the role of women. It really is not a fight with the corporations or the authorities. It is a tight rope walk within the family. And that's all I want to say. Thank you.